Simon Morn, head of sales and distribution at MF Global in London. Simon, I want first of all to kick it off with UBS because the loss uh, from the rogue trader is actually a little bit less than we were expecting. But overall, they're not that optimistic for th their future outlook. Is this mean that you're actually put off by UBS or is it a good time to buy as soon as the stock dips a little bit? Well, a lot of questions there, and certainly it's worth pointing out that the 1.8 billion loss for the rogue traders, some half a billion Swiss francs uh, better than uh, perhaps had been indicated, and entirely offset by an accounting gain on its own debt. Uh, X that, the investment banking loss was a little bit better, i.e. smaller than analysts have been expecting, but the wealth management business, which is really the answer to your question, that's the key business. Those results were pretty weak once you strip out a big gain on sale of treasury securities that they took. The key for UBS, it trades at one times tangible book, Deutsche is on 0.7. The key to UBS, it has a loyal shareholder group that believes the private bank is worth more than the current share price. I think that's a questionable assumption and you look at these today's results in the, in the private bank and you say those were disappointing. And Simon, in terms of what we're seeing at Deutsche Bank, it also seems that actually risk is rising a little bit because of volatility and that will impact this bank in the future. Yes, both banks have seen increases in balance sheets, increases in risk-weighted assets, despite the fact that they're very much controlling the growth of the business right now uh, and basically trying to manage it flat. And the reason for that is increased volatility, but marks on derivative positions, increased uh, capital risk weightings on, under regulation. So you've got a situation where Deutsche, for example, nine month on nine month flat revenues, flat costs, but rising risks, which means it's all about capital management for these banks. And let's face it, if you're a politician in the Eurozone and you're interested in getting the economy moving again, you want your banks lending, you want them out there expanding their balance sheet. But the regulations you put in place yeah. mean that it's impossible for them to do that. They're in de very, very defensive mode. And But we also had a glimpse actually from Deutsche Bank because they marked their debt to actually Greek debt, marked at 46 cents to the euro. So does that give us an indication of what other banks will have to write down? And does it change your portfolio strategy in terms of the ones that you think are a good buy? I don't think it changes the portfolio because we, we knew who was taking proper marks on their sovereign debt and, and who was not. And, and Deutsche Bank has taken an additional impairment here. Uh, it's given us plenty of disclosure about what would happen if it marked all of its uh, uh, pigs exposure or gyps exposure as the banks now call it more politely. Uh, it's also told us what would happen if you were able to offset those losses with gains on other holdings, German Bunds, UK gilts. Just a net 100 million euro loss for Deutsche Bank. So they're saying, look, there really isn't a problem here. We don't have to raise new capital. We won't be subject to equity raising under the EBA stress tests. Don't worry about us. But clearly that is a marker for the rest of the sector and particularly the French banks. They didn't mark their Greek debt to, to market previously. I think they're going to have to to be credible.